Joining me on the big story today, noted jurist Hitesh Jain joins me, Rajan Matthews, Director General at COAI, and Prakash Divan at Asitsi Mehta to get a market perspective. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining us. That's the big story today. I think we've talked about it all day, so none of you need to be told about it. This is about the entire massive order that has come out today, perhaps unprecedented, Hitesh. Have you ever seen something like this before? 122 licenses, an entire policy of the government being quashed and set aside. Well, I will call this as a unprecedented today because uh, if you would have seen in what would have happened like two years or three years before, perhaps you would have seen that although the government would have found that the license have been allotted arbitrarily, the policy is flawed and all, however, the government would have said, okay, any in any event, the license need not be cost. You can impose a heavy penalty and allow the companies to go on with. But here the government has uh, sent a very message, a very stern message. Like, uh, I mean, the Supreme the, Court, the Supreme Court uh, has sent a very stern message uh, that uh, enough is enough. If the policies are not transparent, not only we, and you will have to face the consequences. So uh, the, co the consequences is, uh, is uh, huge. Mm. Let me come to you, uh, Rajan. Uh, two sides to this entire verdict depends on which side uh, one is in terms of interpreting it. So let me pose both of those to you because probably uh, you know you will have a stand on both sides. But the good news, perhaps, is the fact that much needed spectrum, and that is something which COI has been fighting for two decades now. Much needed spectrum gets released. We just heard the TRAI chairman saying that most of the spectrum that was allotted. Uh, to these licenses was unutilized or underutilized, which basically means we were squatting on this spectrum, important as you would know better than anybody else for any telecom operation, and that gets freed. Is that the good news as far as this order is concerned? I'll come to the bad news in just a bit, but first up this. Uh, Vikram, I think the bigger and better news is something that we've again been propagating and uh, espousing for the longest time, that uh, you know, a spectrum is the mother's milk of this business, uh, then that ought to be the key focus in terms of the allocation and the pricing and the methodology that we've always said is appropriate is a transparent auction-based process. And so the good news from our perspective is that the court has uh, come out very strongly and said that ought to be the process going forward. And in fact, the first come, first uh, served uh, policy uh, which usually the court refrains from uh, at, uh, looking at. Here, the court very clearly said the policy itself, by its very nature, it was flawed. So we believe that that setting the tone is very appropriate. Now, the unfortunate part in this is that uh, there are what we call unintended consequences. A lot of innocent investors and companies that obviously uh, took this at face value and invested millions of dollars are now caught on the wrong side of the equation. Your point in terms of having squatted on licenses or squatted on spectrum uh, also goes to the fact that from the very inception, uh, right after the spectrum was allocated, the whole 2G spectrum issue uh, sort of burst on the scene and there was very little incentive, if you will, for companies to continue to invest when there was such a cloud overhanging this whole sector. So there were some takes and puts in this whole process that we really have to take a good look at to see uh, you know, what the uh, process needs to be going forward. But as you said, clearly what needs to happen is let's get the spectrum into the uh, domain, let's auction it, and let's have the government move very quickly to make sure that whoever is uh, uh, legitimately, uh, appropriately going to get the spectrum gets it and move on with this business of what this industry can do. Right. Let me get... Uh a market view here. In fact, two of them, Prakash Divan and Vibhav Kapoor, both joining in. Uh, Prakash, let me come to you first. The immediate reaction, of course, was all stocks started getting hammered out there. And it's only subsequently that the realization dawned that at least the incumbents, at least those who've been around for a while, actually stand to benefit. And those are the bigger entities. And that's perhaps got reflected in the way uh, their stock prices moved. As a market watcher, do you think this is good news? Because you'll probably have, I just heard, the uh, TRAI chairman, no less, saying we are going to see consolidation now. We're going to see lesser players, uh, serious players, not players who were sitting on licenses and spectrum, more importantly, for four years and not rolling out. Is that good news as far as the telecom sector is concerned? 
You know, honestly, Vivek, uh, consolidation is uh, is distinctly healthy for the industry, and we've been kind of uh, you know expecting that since quite some time. It's unfortunate uh, in the way it's been administered. Uh, you know, finally, it was the Supreme Court that had to intervene and take this drastic step of uh, cracking the whip and saying, you know, let's it's time we get things into a fair and reasonable fashion. But uh, essentially, yes, to answer your question, it is good for the industry. Uh, we had a lopsided kind of a, you know, we had a skewed kind of an allocation to spectrum and to utilization levels. So essentially what's going to happen now is that the larger players who have been investing into the business since a longer time and have stayed the risks of the business also have continued for so long and those would distinctly benefit out of that and they, those wouldn't get rewarded. So the newcomers, the Johnny come lately will not uh, you know, necessarily benefit out of uh, you know, somebody just kind of uh, forking out or gifting out uh, spectrum uh, and, and at the cost of the consumer and other larger companies which have come in earlier. So I, I definitely feel amongst the listed players you'll distinctly see a little bit of a momentum that's started off today and that should continue as people do their math and come back to the markets with the exact uh, numbers uh, related to this entire move. So Bharti, Idea, Barcom, all of them distinctly uh, stand on a firmer footing than what they were yesterday. Mm. Vibhav, let me get your thoughts in. Uh, you've been tracking this sector as well uh, fairly closely and have articulated the concerns that you've been seeing. Uh, from a more fundamental going forward point of view, is this good news as far as the sector is concerned and the stocks, the big stocks that Prakash even talked of, is it good news for them? Yeah, I think it's definitely very good news because this will lead to two things. One is the you know non-serious players will go out, and also it will send a signal uh, to investors that uh, you know <clears throat> the industry is really meant for the serious players who are really willing to put in money, roll out um, infrastructure uh, for the industry, and uh, take it forward. And secondly, it would probably lead to more. Uh, chances of consolidation because while competition is good I think too much of it particularly coming from non-serious players is detrimental for the industry so that will not happen any longer and the serious players will be able to put in more money and roll out more infrastructure uh, and also to uh, an extent the spectrum uh, problem will also get resolved to some extent so I think it's uh, very good news for the existing players. Vibhav, one of the more immediate reactions from uh, people in the market was, oh my God, this is disastrous, foreign investors are going to turn away, uh, you know, this is not the thing that should have happened. That was the more immediate reaction that came out from a lot of your uh, colleagues in the market. Do you think all of that was perhaps more emotion than when you actually sit down and think about it, it's not such a bad thing? No, I mean, if you're talking from the investors, not in telecom, but invest foreign investors as a whole, uh, I think it, 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 there might be a little bit mixed sort of reaction in the sense that, you know, investors could feel that, oh, you know, if you invest in India, you don't know whether it's you're doing the right thing or not. But at the same time, I think there's a very positive element to it that you have uh, rule of law, you have courts who give decisions independently. Uh, and uh, that, I think, is going to be a very positive thing uh, for foreign investors over a period of time. So while there might be, you know, an immediate knee-jerk negative reaction, I think in the longer term this is uh, very, very good. All right. Uh, Hitesh, let me come to you. What happens now to these people who've been uh, barred? Now, the question really is some of them, or most of them, would probably say, thank God. You know, we anyway were not ruling out. We were anyway being held guilty of not even using the spectrum that we were given. Uh, and this is an automatic kind of an exit for us. But there would be an odd, one or two or three maybe, who genuinely were at least rolling out businesses, who were putting in money on the ground. And they are the ones who really stand to ask the question, what did we do wrong? Uh, will we get the money back, even if we were to rebid? Will we get the money back that we paid for the licenses? That's an open question out there as to what happens. What would be the legal position, according to you? Well, uh, they will exhaust every possible legal uh, remedy that is available what to them. What could that be? I mean, uh, first, uh, first and foremost is they may consider filing a review petition. Okay. After review petition, they may consider a curative petition. If the review petition is against them, the curative petition. After that, the ball will be in the court of try. Mm -hmm. The trial will have to decide. The trial will have to also decide as to 
whether they should allow this corporate who have been fined by the Supreme Court, whether they should be blacklisted or they should be allowed to participate in the auction. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, if they allow them to participate in the auction, that will be a better way because uh, the more players in the market, the auction will be always better. Mm -hmm. So they will have an opportunity. And I think those people who have rolled, uh, who have already rolled out and all, I think they will participate in the auction and they will make sure that uh, they bid the maximum price. Can, and can the government say I won't give you back your license fee? Uh, it will be very difficult because once the entire process is cancelled, uh, uh, it will be very difficult for the government to uh, say that. So what the government and the try, everybody, they will have to balance out uh, and reconcile this issue and this four months window which is available to them, they will have to think through the entire process and then take a decision. So it will be a decision. I think the decision taken by the Supreme Court is good enough that your licenses have been quashed you have been penalized. So that uh, the penalty which has been imposed on those players, I think that is sufficient for the government. And then the dean over the whole process but, will But start. can the government turn around in this particular case and say, look, you violated a certain principle of the agreement. Now, we don't obviously know the details of that agreement. Maybe you do. Uh, you violated it. You've been penalized. Therefore, I don't need to give you back your license fee. Is that something that could stand? Will, because will, that could have serious repercussions. It will depend upon the terms of the agreement also as to what are the consequences and all. So it will all depend upon the in, the term of the uh, the terms of the agreement between the government and the telcos. One will have to look into the fine mm. fine prints and all. Mm. But uh, I think, uh, in my view, the government. Uh, may not consider taking such hard step of uh, not returning the license fee, the government will say that now will that your license... perhaps hope that, that the perhaps money hope. I get out of auction will be more than will this. Will be much bigger. And that brings this. me to the question coming to you, Rajan, again. Uh, look at this situation. Of most of these companies, as we talked about earlier, they were really not serious, right? There were a few of them, a handful of them who were really serious. So this whole, you know, thought to say that, look, all of them are going to come back and rebid and probably get their uh, spectrum back and their license back is, is a fig leaf, right? You're probably going to only see a couple of them or three of them who are going to come back and rebid. The incumbents, on the other hand, are likely to come and bid uh, because they would need more spectrum. Uh, how do you see that playing out? And also, as you would know better than anybody else, the landscape has changed. Even from 2008 to now, the industry landscape has changed. You're not going to see those uh, astronomical bids going on out there. Uh, how do you see that part playing out? Uh, I think uh, you hit upon a couple of key points. For one thing, as you say, uh, the landscape has changed quite dramatically. Uh, we've seen a significant reduction, if you will, in terms of the gross ads that we're seeing month over month. Uh, we're seeing uh, you know, some stabilization of prices. Uh, obviously, what happened on the last go around on 3G spectrum auction uh, was the fact there was an artificial scarcity on this go around there's plenty of auction that is available both in inventory and that would come out of the cancelled uh, licenses um, so I think you'll see that the pricing for the spectrum uh, will be quite favorable to those who are going in to bid for the spectrum I don't see the stratospheric type of pricing that you see however sort of the wild card in all of this uh, is the fact of what TRAI is going to recommend if you recall on the last go around, they said that uh, uh, when 700 megahertz spectrum came up for auction, one, they wanted uh, the incumbents who have 800, 900 to be precluded, and they were putting a cap on the MA side of 25% market share. So it'll be very interesting to see what the TRAI is going to come forward with in terms of the conditions of spectrum holdings and uh, who gets to qualify to bid and whether the incumbents who have been fine will be able to come back in. So I think it's going to be a watch and wait game for the next uh, three, four months uh, to see what was going to happen. But the good news in all of this is that clearly uh, we don't expect the prices to be in the stratosphere as in the last go around one because uh, the auction process has a lot more of a runway in terms of the amount of spectrum available today. Uh, uh, Minister Sibyl indicated by the end of the year he expected 700 megahertz spectrum to be available. So again, the scarcity factor is being taken away, so that augurs well for those who would like to come in and bid. Right. Prakash, uh, would you therefore, given the fact that uh, spectrum as an issue uh, will no longer be, the scarcity of it would, would not lo no longer be an issue, lesser players means lesser undercutting each other and taking it down to the levels that we uh, saw the sector going to, uh, you know, cutting their own nose. 
consolidation likely to happen? Therefore, would you, as a market uh, uh, buyer of stocks, change your opinion on this sector going forward tomorrow? Absolutely, Vic. I think uh, essentially we are we are actually at the cusp of a turning point of sorts for the sector as a whole. Uh, we are getting into a new environment, uh, a market environment, which is going to be dictated by efficiencies and economies of scale. And then, you know, just to kind of put this in perspective, uh, the last time around when most of these uh, larger players, incumbents, as you've been referring to, increased their tariffs uh, just marginally, and the stocks reacted at least about 25 to 30 percent upwards in the next few months uh, after that change happened. If you recollect, Bharti moved out of this zone of uh, 260, 280, and suddenly you had it in that 310, 325 zone. And of course, after that, it's taken its time to build uh, beyond that. But uh, the same thing is going to happen with the given situation. It's going to be uh, much more fair pricing for the consumers and hopefully for the for the companies as well. So they'll be able to make sure that uh, they, they are run the business profitably. They can invest into technology, which is all the time changing and developing and evolving. So essentially, that means the bottom lines are going to be much more healthier for a longer visible period of time. So as an investor, that gives me great comfort. And that gives me uh, definitely a much bigger allocation that I can look at making towards the telecom players that are listed. And possibly you'll have Vodafone getting listed uh, sooner than later uh, with the given situation that's emerged. Hmm. My final question to you, uh, Hitesh, uh, do, you, do you foresee a situation where we could get, uh, while, while the good thing of this order is, is it sets a timetable. It sets a timetable on the government four months, it sets a timetable on TRAI, uh, but as it happens in, in, in a lot of litigation, do you see this getting delayed? Do you see this dragging on? Because clearly the stakes involved, at least for some entities, is a lot, uh, a lot enough to actually go and appeal, in all fairness. Do you see that happening and maybe ruining the party? This whole uh, feeling of uh, relief that you know it's going to be over in four months and we're going to move ahead could actually get spiked out. Uh, I don't really think so. The no. only question of the delay is if the Supreme Court will uh, take some time in disposing the review petition. But pendency of review petition does not mean that the procedure, the process mm -hmm. comes to a standstill. It all depends if in the review petition the court says, okay, larger issue, we are giving a stay on the operation of the order and all, then it's altogether a different uh, uh, ball game. But uh, unless this order gets reviewed, or uh, in the review, the Supreme Court takes a different view, then only it can uh, lead to any delay in the because of the judicial process. Otherwise, four months, the government has to take stand, and uh, it has to take the decision because it's going to affect uh, uh, many of the players over there, and particularly those companies who have rolled out. I think they will make sure uh, they uh, they would like to ensure that the decision uh, that the process is completed in the within the next four months. All right, gentlemen, we leave it there. Thanks very much, Hitesh. Thanks very much, uh, Rajan and Prakash, uh, for joining us uh, and sharing your thoughts on this big story of the day. We take a quick break. We come back and tell you what the impact could be on banks. We haven't talked about uh, that category. They've uh, lent a fair amount of money to these telecom companies. So how are they going to be impacted? We'll find out after the short break.